Thank you for visiting Pastor Wire TV, the YouTube channel of PastorWire.com. Buongiorno everybody, Saratoga today with Pastor Wire, yours truly, day 24 to meet, and uh, the four star Dave is in the books, uh, big shout out, congratulations to Spencer Farm, uh, huge run by, by God, God Stormy to win this race again, she's won it in the past, uh, I actually thought she was uh, a step slower, slower this year, she showed me that uh, not the case at all. She just needed a couple to get back to her best. Uh, ran a, a, a huge race, beating the boys again. And that's that's one heck of a mare that Spencer Farm has there. Uh, just super, super impressed. Uh, another shout out to our friends at Zilla Racing Stables. Their maiden didn't get out of the gate well. Uh, definitely came running and looks like one to watch going forward they've got another one in today as does spendthrift we'll get to that in, in a minute but uh good day yesterday you know if if you bet the right way okay and you understand that you're going to lose more races than you win but you understand that you have to make it count when you're right and really capitalize on those 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 days. Uh, you can erase a lot of sins with uh, with, with, with a good day, uh, and that that that's what happened yesterday. That was a meat maker for me, regardless of what happens going forward. Uh, and that's that's what you need. Uh, you need to be able to to zero in on those. The other thing I wanted to to recap a little bit, which I think is important, an, an important takeaway. Uh, you know, I, I I don't like to knock buyer speed figures. I just don't use them and don't believe in them. I'm glad they're in the form because I think that they sway people away. Uh, but yet yesterday with High Oak, uh, you, you know, a couple of people on TV, I normally mute the TV telecast because I just don't like anybody else's opinion or any kind of gibberish getting in my head. Uh, I usually watch the track feed. Uh, but yesterday we were having storms over here. So as opposed to watching the track feed on the satellite dish, I was watching the, uh, I guess the Fox feed on, um, the, the streaming, uh, thing. So, uh, Roku. So anyway, uh, you know, I, I just happened to hear a couple of people say how High Oaks race was slow, you know, and we talked about how on the thoroughbred it wasn't a slow figure it was pretty competitive with the better figures in the race it wasn't the best figure but it was certainly competitive and if he went forward even a little bit off that figure he was going to be right in it but more important than that you know there's so much information out there a ton of it you know what i mean between detailed past performances all kinds of different speed ratings thoroughbred which i like which we've discussed uh because it, 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 it factors in ground loss and trip and, and, and other things as opposed to raw speed figures like, like Byers and Brisnet and even, even time form, which I don't use because I could look at a race and tell you whether or not it was a fast race or how fast a horse ran. And most of you who've been doing this a while should, uh, should, should be able to do that as well. And I apologize for that beeping. I, I, I should have shut it off, but those are emails coming in. Um, anyway, uh, the biggest edge you can get in this game, and this is something I, I, I'll stress and is so important, is uh, betting on your own opinion and your own eyesight. And, and, and replays are crucial. And I take a lot of notes when I watch races on, on things I saw. Uh, High Oak was a horse that I put on tracking trips because I knew he was a runner. I saw it. I saw the determination. I saw that he had that you know, older experienced horse mentality and I believed in it and I bet him accordingly. Uh, that's stuff that you can't get out of the racing form and past performances and that nobody else can tell you. Uh, 
you, you, you know, I love betting on my own opinion more than anything else that I'll see on any past performance or or any speed rating or, or, or anything else like that. Uh, and that comes with experience. You know, I've been, been around this game a long time, doing it a long time. And, and, and you, you know, if anything, I can tell you that believe in, in your opinion, believe in what you see more than anything else and, and go with your gut instinct and, uh, you, you know, don't be afraid to, to lose. Just make it count when you win, you know, make it count when you're right. And, uh, it's, it's important if you want to, if you want to really beat this game. So, uh, with that, uh, thank you to Spencer Farm, uh, home of Gormley, who is the sire of High Oak, uh, another one that I'm kind of high on, uh, but Gormley, uh, and all the others into mischief and 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 my Tolly, who I mentioned, and their whole slew of stallions. Big shout out to Zilla Racing Stables. Uh, big run yesterday. Didn't get the money, but uh, made in special way to Saratoga. Showed a lot of promise, and they got one in today that we're going to talk about, along with one from Spencer. If we're going to talk about, and last but definitely not least, our our friends at Am Wager, uh, who. Just deliver that 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 beautiful ADW day in and day out to bet on some of these horses we talk about, and uh, it's all good. Uh, you know we're going to get to that show where we talk about one of the tools on Amway's site that I really like a lot that I think a lot of you are going to like a lot. Uh, but we'll wait for the right race to discuss that and, and see if we can, uh, lack of a better term, exploit that tool and use it. Uh, and, 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 and learn how to embrace it and make some money with it. Uh, Shug's horse ran big in that maiden race yesterday. I didn't expect that early big sweeping move, but I'll take it. Once he made it, I kind of knew we got that one home as well. So that was nice. Uh, uh, on tracking trips, we had, the, I, I know everybody who watches this video is not a tracking trips member, member, but we did have the winner of the last race at I think 17 or $18, the horse, uh, Eric Cancel Road for Gina Antonucci, last race. That was a nice winner to close out the card. Had another nice one at uh, at Delmar. Tough beat at Delmar as well, but um, uh, be that as it may. I hope some of you checked out tracking trips yesterday. Uh, I had encouraged you to because I thought there were some live horses on it. So uh, if you haven't had a chance, check it out. I think uh, I think it's a, a, a good tool and will help a lot of you. Um, Let's go to the races. Uh, day 24, Saratoga, Sunday. Uh, meet rolling right along. Uh, I think we're in it now, uh, for better or for worse. So, we'll start with the fifth race, the maiden special weight race, you know. Uh, nice race, and it's always a nice race when you get these maiden races at Saratoga, we notice. Uh, knowing Glance, uh, Jimmy Creed, who I like a lot, and Jimmy Creed, believe it or not, if you go back to the Breeders' Cup sprint he ran in with Garrett Gomez riding him uh, for Richard Mandela, I, I, I think, several several years ago, um, I remember telling my friend before that race, you know, Jimmy Creed wins this race if he drew outside. He drew inside, and I was afraid he was going to get bottled up. Uh, and that's exactly what happened. But I believe, and I think he won the race after that big time. And I made a big bet on him coming out of that Breeders' Cup sprint and cashed it. And I kept thinking to myself, you know, I think I was right. I think he would have won the Breeders' Cup sprint if he, if he drew outside. He did get bottled up with, uh, may he rest in peace, uh, Garrett Gomez uh, in that Breeders' Cup sprint that day. But uh, this, this filly is by Jimmy Creed. Um, Ran a nice race, first time out for Al Stahl. Al Stahl is, is a really, really sharp trainer. Uh, steadied late, but uh, I don't know that it really made a difference in the outcome of the race. But, you know, every right to go forward here. Uh, the rail drawer is a little tough, but we will be rooting for Spencer Farm. And we will be rooting for the two as well. Uh, this is this is sportsmanship. We've got two of our... Uh, our, our friends of the show and sponsors and, 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 and those who make this show possible, uh, Zilla and Spendthrift running against each other out of the one and two posts in this race. So we're going to be rooting for either one, e e either one of them. Tap and Glow is a tapature that um, Mike Piazza came on the show and spoke about. Uh, 
and they're really high on this horse, and you can see see why. She's a nice-looking filly. She's got every right to go forward again. She ran a big race last time out. Um, gotta like her. Gotta think she's got a heck of a chance in here as well. Manny rides back for Brad Cox, who's been hitting on all cylinders, and uh, I think she's... Uh, you know, really, really, really dangerous in here as I, as I do to one. And hopefully one of those two can win. But they're going to have to put their running shoes on because I have heard some rumblings. And, you know, I don't bet on anybody's opinion but my own. I don't listen to tips. I think they're nonsense. Everybody loves their horse at Saratoga um, and other places as well. Some of you know the story at a time when I got a big tip on my own horse from somebody who's a sharp player. Um, and didn't even realize it was my horse. Give me a tip on my own horse. So um, all kinds of information flowing around. Um, there's been two horses in the past year that people have uh, uh, raved about. Oh, Steve Esmussen loves this horse, blah, 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 blah. Both of them tanked, and he didn't like either one of them. So be careful when you listen to that gibberish, man. It's just go go with your own opinion. Uh, horses humble and fool anybody and everybody i'd rather a guy tell me i don't like my horse at all uh needs not one but two more races to be fit than a guy telling me that they love their horse and even those win guys put horses in races to fill races for the other horse and bang the one they put in there to fill the race winds up winning the other guy's horse you know you don't need any tips uh, you need to have a good opinion and a sharp opinion and believe in it. Uh, now, what we do on this show is a little different. I don't consider myself giving out horses or giving out tips or anything like that. I'm just another set of eyes sharing an opinion that's been doing this. Uh, I'd like to think a good opinion that's been doing this for literally half a century. So there's some, there's some value and takeaway in that. But tips, you don't need anybody for that. Um, <clears throat> I hear rumblings getting back. I get off track. I, I Brooklyn, New York, I talk a lot, uh, especially when it comes to horses. Other subjects, I don't say a word, but is what it is. Uh, I hear rumblings. And when I hear rumblings, they're usually good rumblings. On uh, Todd Pletcher's horse, Jester Calls No Joy. Interesting name. Puts uh, Rosario up. Rosario hasn't been riding a lot for Todd Pletcher. So I read it at this meet anyway. I read into that. Hmm, Ron Anderson, get me on a live one. Let's get a win together. Uh, rah, rah, rah. McLean's music, who I think is a really, really good sire for first time out uh, runners. Uh, and uh, nice works. You know, working with a horse that uh, is unraced, but outworking that horse pretty easily. Uh, if that one can run, look out. Uh, Steve Asmussen has an into mischief in there that's had two starts and proved dramatically in the second start. But what I notice about his horse, uh, this filly was one to two first time out, six to five second time out, didn't win. But they're betting her that way for a reason. She's not one of the two that I heard those super stories on. Uh, she was just taking money. Uh, Went for 450000 so maybe that's got something to do with it. Uh, but I don't know. You know, they they were betting her hard. Uh, Chad's got uh, an into mischief in there as well for Klarovich. Uh He's got a dead devil in there as well, but the into mischief catches the eye a little bit more. Um, so we'll see what happens. But uh, we'll be rooting for the one or the two. Uh, Nolan Glance from Spencer Farm and Tap and Glow who we had Mike on the show, talked about her and how he bought her and how high he is on her. Uh, number two with Manny Franco. So let's hope the fifth race, one of our, 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 our home team outfits get the money at Saratoga in a maiden special weight race. Doesn't get better than that. Uh, moving along, sixth race. I thought there were a couple of things worth mentioning. Uh, Looks like a, a relatively light field, but uh, the one is a claim uh, by Rob Attress for Michael Dubb. We know Michael Dubb's winning with everything. Uh, doesn't matter who's training for him. Rob Attress is seven 
for like 23 or 24, 25 at the meet, something like that. I'm hitting about 30%. So he's making the right moves. Uh, this horse had no speed going seven. Now it's cutting back to five and a half from the rail. Uh, looks looks like a tough proposition. Easy to get bottled up from there, but dub wins with everything. So it's worth it's worth mentioning. And uh, so does Mike Maker, who's got an angle that I like a lot. Okay, uh, this is a horse that uh, the three black licorice ran in a maiden special weight first time out at Belmont. Didn't run a step at a, at a, at a you know reasonable eight to one. Maybe a little chilly. Maybe not. I don't remember the race. Uh, now comes back first time three year old in a maiden claimer five to one on the morning line probably be around that maybe less if 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 if, if she's well meant like I suspect she might be, um, but I love horses like that I love horses with one start in a maiden special weight race at two come back as a three year old in a maiden claimer, uh, and and just totally totally grew up and reversed that form big time and I can see that happening. And another horse I'll mention in here, because I think we should, is the 10, Roxon, uh, at 12 to 1 for Eddie Barker. Uh, Eddie Barker, been around a long time, doesn't have a lot of horses, doesn't get a lot of opportunities, but been around a long time, knows what he's doing, uh, adds Lasix to this, to this FNX New York bred filly, and uh, I think her... Turf debut was a good one, and I think she can surprise at a, a, a little bit of an o overlooked price. And I always root for Eddie Barker. He's a good guy and a sharp guy, and uh, I think he's got a contender. He's already won a race at the meet. He's won for nine. That's pretty good with a limited number of horses. Uh, so we'll be rooting for, for Eddie. Uh, the seventh race was the race where I, I like the horse a little bit today that I may, I may, I may play. Uh you know, these turf races are so frustrating because the pace just doesn't materialize. And this is one that looks like it's got sus suspect pace issues going in. And of course, who do I like? I like a horse that needs pace and is going to be coming from off it. So that's a problem right then and there. But like I tell a good friend of mine, uh, Jimmy, who we handicap a lot together, uh, sometimes you got to just approach these races and say, you know what, if I got the best horse, even off those slow 25, 50 fractions, 24, 49, whatever, that was ridiculous. Sometimes it just mow them down anyway and you hope for the best. And this horse has the right rider to do that. Uh, but before we get to that one, we got to take a quick look at the seven. Never explain. Oh, all right. Now we're having a, a, a good meet because we know how to, how, to, how to turn it around with the right results. But if you remember the seven, never explain on July 24th in the seventh race, good wager for me, 26 to one, did everything but win, says ahead, felt more like a nose, last jump, shifting sands gets us at 26 to one. That would have been a huge, huge, huge start to the meet. And had that one won after yesterday, this would have been an epic meet for me, but we got nailed. And the way I bet, I don't get nothing for second, so... Uh, be that as it may. But in this race, uh, I like someone else today. Uh, I lean to Hidden Enemy. Okay, Hidden Enemy's coming out of the Grade 1 Belmont Derby. Didn't really run there. Probably didn't belong in there with uh, Bolshoi Ballet and, and, and those kind of horses. But now, comes back to a non-winner of one allowance race with a lot of bottom. bottom uh, ran through. <laughs> Cloud Computing outside, Classic Empire, head to head, down to the line, Cloud Computing wins the Preakness! We reach the starting gate, it's post time. Cold front, the favorite comes forward. Heather into the stretch, Cold front put to the test. Cold front does it again, back right the field of the Amsterdam. Now, what I like today is that... Uh, He's going back on Lasix. He gets Joel Rosario, and he gets a mile and an eighth as opposed to a mile and a sixteenth. I mean, I'd love it if it was a mile and three sixteenths or a mile and a quarter, because I think he wants to run as far as you want to card the race. But um, I really like him at uh, the mile and an eighth, and I I like him, you know, dropping in class to the non-winner of one. Uh, Steve Asmussen 
we, we, we know he's just deadly. And, you know, Bolshoi Ballet, Cellist, De Jour, all of those horses are, are, in my opinion, better than what he's going to see today. So I got a feeling we're going to see, in this, see this one rolling late and hopefully get up uh, under one of those classic Joel Rosario rides. Uh, so that's, that's the horse that I lean to today. Uh, you know, there's, there's other, other ones in there that are, are contenders, but I'm going to land there. Hopefully he sits on the rail, sits a nice trip, and comes running the way that I think that he can, uh, especially back on Lasix. Uh, the eighth race... I will mention something. You know, Peter Walter loved his horse in the in the second race yesterday, and he, and he didn't run that bad. He didn't run well at all. So I, I have to point something out, and I, I I'm not an excuse maker, but I will say this: that's something that's not, probably not going to show in the paddock, and that a lot of people won't know. Uh, horse broke bad. We saw that, but the horse flipped in the paddock before the race, uh, and then ran anyway. And I'm I'm a big uh, big no go for that. Um, when a horse breaks through the gate or has trouble like that in the paddock, I'm of the automatic scratch opinion. Uh, you know, we had that horse at Belmont, I forget the name, a month ago, six weeks ago, whatever it was, that ran off and they brought the horse back into the gate and ran the horse and he ran bad. Uh, I'm, I'm dead set against that. I think those should be automatic scratches. I think it hurts the, the race and hurts everybody in it and changes everything. But... Uh, Peter's due for some luck, and uh, hopefully he gets it, and maybe he'll get it in the eighth race. I mean, it's a tough race for sure. We got 10 to 1 on a morning line, but it's Peter, my man, Walder, off the claim. Luisa is up on Persian Queen. And when I used to have horses with Peter and we used to run horses together, this this one looks a little cheap, but one of the things, you know, his, his move was we would take a horse and we would... You know, just put the horse in his program, the, the, you know, best feed, best everything, best supplements, everything that he likes to do, because uh, he does spend money on his horses. He's not uh, a skimper on anything, even with these, these claimers, and um, which is how it should be, in my opinion. And a lot of horses used to really respond, and, and you know, this one worked well after the claim. Luisa Ez rides. The horse has two wins in her lifetime at Saratoga. You guys know and gals know that I'm a big horse for course guy. So I'll be rooting for my man Peter to get a little redemption from uh, Friday and Saturday where just things didn't go his way in the stake with Sha Sha Shake Me Up. And then yesterday with that horse that he really likes a lot flipping in the paddock. That was a, a tough, tough break. Uh... Ninth race is a wide open turf sprint stake at Saratoga to Galway. Uh, there's 10 horses in there and there's probably 10 ways you could go. Uh, I lean to two. Uh, no, no big revelations here. I think going good is going to run very well again. I think she's tough. I think she likes to win. Uh, she likes the grass. She's just in fine fettle, as they say. And she's got the perfect post and the perfect style uh, from the seven hole just sitting right off. Any any blazing barn burners in there. And should be a, a, a handful, in my opinion. Uh, but then again, there's a lot of ways to go. And these turf sprints are always tough. The other horse that I look at is Christophe Clement's horse right outside of her, the eight horse. Bye-bye. Uh, uh, I like... Uh, another angle, and I like to talk about angles that I like. Uh, and, and, and understand this, when I like an angle, I don't bet a horse just because it has uh, or is coming off a certain angle. I, I you know, it's got to check all the other boxes for me too. I got to, you know, handicap the race and I'm the methodical handicapper line by line from the bottom up, uh, as some of you know. So they got to check other boxes for me as well. But I do like horses that have shown the ability to come off the pace sprinting as this one has or sit a trip sprinting as this one has. Uh, and then this filly, when she stretched out to the mile, um, she went to the lead, tired late, uh, and now she cuts back to five and a half. So me, I believe that those kind of speed races and then cutting back and they go back to their original style of off the pace, 
uh, lack of a better term, legs him up and gives him some good good bottom. And I think she comes from off the pace today, and she may be another one that's rolling late under under Joel. So uh, that's kind of what I thought. There was plenty of action today, plenty to root for. Uh, we got a lot of our peeps in the in in the game today, so it's going to be an exciting day. Uh, one horse I lean to, uh, like I said, Hidden Enemy in the seventh, but uh, a couple of other spots I'm looking at, like I said, and you all know who we are rooting for. Uh, domestic spending upset the Arlington Million by a horse that went wire to wire with a very, very slow pace. That was surprising to me. I thought uh, he would be able to run down anybody in any scenario that in that race, but it doesn't always go that way. We know that, you know, pace makes the race as they say, uh, said that that may be the last Arlington million. They called it the Mr. D for, uh, the main man of that racetrack. And I think they deserved it better and, uh, hopefully they can still get saved. It wasn't even, uh, the Arlington million. It was the, uh, Mr. D 600,000. So, uh, it's a shame what what what, what happened over there. Uh, maybe maybe there's a, a hail mary that could still happen and save Arlington Park. I would love to see it. I think it's a great great venue, uh, and the Arlington Million is a race that I think we should really want to keep around. Uh, hopefully, if they don't save Arlington, somebody picks up that race, keeps the name the Arlington Million, uh, runs it at the right time of year where it gets the right kind of field and some international people in there, and. Uh, we save something in the sport. That's good. Uh, anyway, uh, thank you, everybody, for tuning in. Thank you for the support. Love doing these shows. For those of you that enjoyed them, uh, keep the messages and questions coming. We got a big week of racing coming up. Uh, two days off that I actually need after doing these videos and everything else that I need to do every day. So uh, that'll be that'll be enjoyable. But uh, I'm doing other things on those days anyway, and it's all racing related. So, okay, uh, thanks for tuning in. Ciao for now. Go win some photos, make some money, bet smart, bet right. And uh, we will reconvene on Wednesday morning for Saratoga Today. Nobody does it better.